congressman from Pennsylvania, Admiral Joe Sestak, and retired Navy SEAL Brandon Webb, the author of The Red Circle, My Life in the Navy SEAL Sniper Corps, and How I Trained America's Deadliest Markman. Brandon, I'll begin with you on the set. A military apparatus, no matter what it's training, is only as good as its mission clarity and the metrics to achieve that mission. Fair? Yeah, absolutely. How clear mission and what are the metrics that, as you understand them, in our current occupation? You know what, it's, it, when you look at what's happening over there, I think is a step in the right direction, but like we were talking previously, you have a situation where there still is no clear, clearly defined ultimate objective in Afghanistan. You know, what are the milestones? How does it shape up? And when you get a situation where you, know, you have this ambiguity out there and the war fighters don't understand what the ultimate strategy is in Afghanistan, the American people don't understand what the ultimate objective is. What, what's our return on investment? What is, you know, a very clear cut plan? And you get a different answer. Everyone you ask, whether they're in the service, or politician or walking on the street they'll they'll tell you a different answers so that that's a that's an issue uh, ultimately m mission clarity and metrics congressmen are to be defined by the policymakers themselves uh, we train uh, people like uh, Brandon and, and so many others to execute uh, these missions uh, uh, quite candidly above and beyond I think a lot of our expectations uh, when you see what they are capable of what is the barrier that we can make our way through this summer, forget the past, so that we can define mission clarity for those who are currently in country, define metrics, and help achieve them? I think the reason what we went into Afghanistan, Dylan, has been achieved. A greater sacrifice than it should have if we hadn't gone to that tragic misadventure in Iraq, which was to destroy the haven of the Al-Qaeda, which went to Pakistan, and we have decimated that to a large extent. Now, what the president is trying to do, and I argue, I agree with you, that he's not, he's accepting reality that was obvious a few years ago, is to try to hand over not peace, but a decent counterinsurgency effort by training the Afghanistan military and police so that we do depart and they continue with our support of, with NATO, $4 billion, they are hopefully going to be able not to have a vacuum there that Iran comes in, that Al-Qaeda with the Taliban come back. I think that's possible, but I'm not sure it's probable. So exiting as we can safely is the best strategy, leaving some modicum of stability behind. Brandon, when you look at translating the debate in, on American soil, whatever that debate consists of, into the reality of waking up and going to bed as a, a, a warrior in Afghanistan, what would be the one thing that an active duty soldier in Afghanistan that would make their lives more clear and more easy today, regardless of what we talk about? Well, I think it just comes down to why are we over there and what are we trying to accomplish? You know, it's, it's just, and you look at, you know, you talk about the situation where you know we're propping up this in counterinsurgency but at at what point when we turn off the faucet of funding you know what's left what is going to incentivize the people of Afghanistan to stay there and reinvest in their own country and, and that's something that I, I think is a big problem too it's yeah sure you pay these guys money they'll they'll join the army they'll be a policeman but what really truly are they are they fighting for and what what's going to be left when when the funding turns off in a decade or or longer and to that end the congressman really what brandon is referring to obviously is hearts and minds at, at the end of the day and and why it is that a given man or woman in any part of the world gets out of bed uh... and, and goes to work that day and what and why and what that means to them uh, obviously everybody in this world would like to have some sense of food security everybody in this world would like to have some sense of energy security whether you're chinese brazilian american uh... whatever your origin is or afghani uh, security gets higher when food and energy and adaptive learning and health are available um, do you get the sense that we are even in a position as a foreign power to affect a culture like that that is not ours. Are we arrogant to suggest that our dreams of this sort of utopian world of sustainable food and energy, it is not for us to project that? Or is that something that we should be doing? No, it's not. 
When we went into Afghanistan initially with the prime purpose of eradicating the al-Qaeda that struck us on 9-11, and I was on the ground for a very short mission, nothing like what Brandon has done, who's a true hero. We were doing it right. We had our special forces, our civil affairs forces, and we're bringing in the other elements of our power, of education, the rule of law, to leave behind a society that had some economic development and was able to be viable without letting a haven be reestablished in the future for al-Qaeda. When we took those forces and went to Iraq, our chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said a few years ago, in Iraq, we do what we must. In Afghanistan, we do what we can. That ended it right there. Because we no longer had the ability and the attention and the resources when we're just doing what we can instead of what we must to gain the hearts and the minds. That's why this exit is the right thing to do. The national treasure it would take to have that society the way you describe it is too much. And as you brought up at the beginning of this discussion, Trying to get out through Pakistan is the safest and surest method we can go. But we've already let contracts in February of this year to get out through those five northern uh, countries there, the Central Asian states like Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, where most of our supplies come. We'll probably even be exiting through uh, uh, Russia. This is a hard thing to do to exit. And we have to do it surely and safely and hopefully leave behind an army that can at least give some stability and security to those that remain there. Left to your own devices or with a small squad, 5, 10, 20 people, of all the communities you could do business with to acquire supplies and to enhance your own security, to facilitate an exit, to facilitate a mission, water, clean water, whatever it might be, on a military activity, is there one community or one group of communities over in that part of the world that you personally or your, those you've worked with have found historically more reliable than others? And, and, and is there a guidance for us as we try to navigate the exit to, to know, is there any variance in, in those that can be relied upon? Well, I think it's, you want to, f there are people, good people in Afghanistan that love the country and want to see meaningful change, but, you know, that you just have to understand that that takes, that takes a lot of time. It doesn't take 10 years. You can't affect that kind of cultural change in 10 years and, and, and give them, you know, a, a democracy overnight. It takes, you know, the seeds of democracy, it, it takes time to, to establish those roots and, you know, we'll need the cooperation of Pakistan uh, for sure or else that it's going to plummet into civil war and, you know, the Taliban will take over again. But the bigger issue I see is, you know, you talk, there's all this talk about Al-Qaeda, this, Al-Qaeda, that. What we're really up against is this radical Islamic movement globally and you have this situation where we're running around putting out fires which are the symptoms of radical Islam when we should be looking at affecting how do we affect the root causes you know what what are the social and political environments that are producing the, the bin Ladens of tomorrow because there's there's a whole lot of other scary terrorist groups in running brief, around the world in right? brief how would you define the root well the root is these radical mullahs that are getting these five-year-old kids in Yemen, in Pakistan, all over, and they're they're teaching them to hate the Western. Well, what, Western I guess my world. question is, what is the necessary social, governmental, or environmental prerequisite for there to be an appetite for for that? Well, I think it, it's like you said, it's the heart. It's a hearts and minds game, and you start investing in education, healthcare, sustainability, and and then you start winning those hearts and minds and. And it's a totally different mission. Absolutely. Yeah. But if I could, Dylan, that's what we were out and about doing at the very beginning of this conflict. The illiteracy rate of women is about 98% in Afghanistan. The ability to have fixed that might have done more for fixing the source of terrorism than anything our military could do. We in the military can stop a problem. We can't fix it. But just like Brandon Wells said, the economic development, the literacy rate that gives an educated workforce where they have hope and don't get attracted to a radical idea is what we were about before we took our focus off this, off this war. One last thing is very important. As we exit, we have to remember we're leaving there some very good Afghan military. Not many of them are inept, I got it. But when they got shot, a Chinook would fly in 
pick them up and take them to first class surgery place. They had intelligence surveillance from us. When that, how that evaporates on them will also determine how well they stand by themselves because we have to make sure this transition isn't looked upon them like it was after the Soviet Union and we were giving supplies and so to against them and the Soviet Union then eg exited that they feel completely abandoned again. And I think that's the fine rope the president's trying to do with the minimum amount of support right. that he can give. But I think that the most profound message in this, I know we've run the clock, is that the military is incredibly well skilled at putting out the fire or extinguishing the burn the mission of healing or right. caring for the root of the fire before it lights is a broader mission that will be involve our military but will involve everybody else absolutely as well and really that to me i would suggest should be the post-war mandate for global culture which I think we're seeing in many ways whether people who are on TV or have power of any kind are even discussing it. It's actually rather inspiring when you see it. Uh, Brandon, it's great to have you in the studio. Yeah, um, Congressman, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for making the Same time here. for us. Uh, Joe Sestak.